it's time to shoot your video. You put your camera on your tripod, attach a lens, a microphone, and set the ISO, shutter speed, aperture, focus, frame rate, bit rate, and make sure the lighting is just right, and away you go. Afterwards, you think, today was a big success. You load your footage onto your computer, excited to see what you captured. And then, you're horrified. White balance. You had it set for outdoors, but then you went indoors, or you were indoors and then you went outdoors, and with everything else you had to remember, you forgot to set it. Here's where you cross your fingers. You take your footage into your editing software, try to correct the white balance, and hope for the best. Sometimes, it works out. Sometimes, not so much. So I know this has happened to me, when you're focused on so many things, something like white balance can slip through the cracks. So the question I have is, just how bad can you mess up the white balance, and then still be able to easily fix it? Let's find out. Now, if you're shooting proper raw, it's raw, you're gonna get substantial leeway with messing up nearly everything, including white balance. So if you're taking photos, raw is really the only way to go. But because of camera capabilities or file sizes, most of us aren't shooting proper raw video. So today I'm gonna be testing 10-bit video using two different picture profiles on the Sony a7 IV. One with a fairly finished image right out of camera with a Cinetone, and the other S-Log3. But first, what is white balance and how do you set it? White balance is the process of removing unrealistic color casts from light sources, with the end goal to have objects which appear a certain color in person appear the same way in your image. To the naked eye, many light sources may appear colorless, but in fact emit a color, which we measure as a color temperature using the Kelvin scale. On one end is something like this flame, at around 2000 Kelvin, emitting a nice warm orange glow. And on the other is this cool blue daylight sky, which can be over 6,500 Kelvin. Now, depending on your camera, there's gonna be a few options to set white balance, from auto to different presets. But to get the best consistent white balance, you're gonna to wanna to manually set it. And here's how you do it. I'm using the Sony a7 IV for this, but it should be similar on many other mirrorless cameras. First thing you wanna do is set up a scene with all your lights. In the menu of your camera, go to white balance and then scroll all the way down until you see one of the custom buttons. On this camera, there are three custom slots for you to set white balance, but we'll just choose the first one here. After that, you'll need one of these. This is a white card and this is an 18% gray card. You can use either, but I prefer the gray one. I've talked about this before, but it's a great cheap tool for setting exposure using zebras. Well, this also works great for setting your white balance. All you do is put the gray card in your frame, making sure it's properly lit, then scroll over to it and click set. Your camera will automatically set proper white balance and tell you the color temperature of your scene, which in this case is 3000 Kelvin, a fairly common temperature for indoor lighting. This will be our control footage for proper white balance. Now, let's begin to push it. We know our actual scene is 3000 Kelvin, so I'm recording footage at other color temperatures incrementally all the way up to 5600 Kelvin. As I increase the white balance, my image will start to appear more yellow. This could happen to you if you've set your white balance for outdoors, but are instead shooting indoors. It's happened to me. The goal here is to color correct the footage minimally and quickly to get a result that's virtually indistinguishable from our control footage. Sure, you can spend hours changing every color trying to get that perfect white balance, and I have, but what I want to find out is how bad can we mess up the white balance and easily fix it. I have all the footage in Premiere, but you can use whatever editing software you have. Starting with the S Cinetone footage, I'm gonna first use the white balance tool, which is an eyedropper here, and all I have to do is click the gray card. So as you can see, 100 Kelvin higher, it's a pretty easy fix. Now these two images look pretty identical. Let's keep moving. At 3800 Kelvin, just 800 away from our control footage, using the white balance corrector is no longer enough. My skin is still too yellow. By the way, a great way to check if you have accurate white balance is to check the skin tones using the vector scope. This is the skin tone line and all types of skin should be on this line for a realistic image. To check this footage, I'll mask out my face and check the vector scope. And as you can see from the control to the white balance 3800 Kelvin, my skin is pushed too far yellow. So in Premiere, I can go to HLS secondary and correct the skin. And after that, yeah, it's usable. I can then go into curves or color wheels and change the shadows, midtones, and highlights to try and correct the footage. But the point is, after only 800 Kelvin away from our control footage, acinetone becomes difficult to fix. And if you go even further to let's say 5,600 Kelvin, Good luck with all that. Let's see if our log footage holds up a bit better. With any log footage, to get a final image, generally you wanna convert it to something like Rec. 709, often using a LUT. But when correcting mistakes like white balance, you wanna do that before converting. And so I'll be applying corrections to the footage layer and then adding a Rec. 709 LUT using an adjustment layer. Unlike the Asinetone footage at 3800 Kelvin, the log footage, it's pretty easy to fix. At 4500 Kelvin, I can still fix it, but I have to go in and change the skin tones and a few other colors. 
by 5000 Kelvin, the image is pretty bad and really difficult to fix. So I'd say we get somewhere between 1500 and 2000 Kelvin away from our control footage before things get really difficult to fix. But that's better than our s cinetone footage, which was only 800 Kelvin away. But what about the other direction? Let's do the reverse. Now I have my lights set to 5600 Kelvin and the custom white balance is reading the same temperature. Again, I'm going to record footage changing the white balance slowly all the way down to 3000 Kelvin. And this time it will become increasingly more blue. At 800 Kelvin away, 4800 Kelvin, there's definitely a difference, but it looks better than the reverse. I think this direction might be a little easier to correct because we don't have the yellows mixing with our skin tones. So it will depend on what you're shooting. I can get to around 4300 Kelvin before the image becomes difficult to fix. The skin looks pretty good, but the gray doesn't look all that gray and the white looks a little bit yellow. So a difference of 1300 Kelvin, which is better than 800 Kelvin in the reverse. Checking out the S-Log3 footage and it's easily fixable all the way until about 3700 Kelvin, close to 2000 Kelvin away from our control footage. So this one's actually similar to the reverse. I think there are a few pretty good takeaways here. Most importantly, set your white balance. It only takes a few seconds, and forgetting can cost you hours of editing. But if you think you might forget, opt for log. It allows more latitude with mistakes, which we all make. And if you are gonna shoot log, maybe keep your camera's white balance somewhere in the middle, around 4000 Kelvin. That way, if you do forget, you might be able to fix it no matter what direction you mess it up. Hey look, new shirt. The greatest part about having proper white balance is that it allows you to color grade your footage however you'd like. But if you do shoot in log, before you can get creative with your colors, you'll first want to convert the footage, maybe using a LUT. And if you want to know the best one for your Sony camera, click here.